So I've actually recorded this video once already and then I hate I hated how it came out. I hated the drawing, I hated the video, it was just a bad time. But I didn't want to just not review these markers and so I decided to give it another go. So here we are. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're doing well. Originally when I was going to review these markers, I had it filmed in a sketch vlog type of format, but like I said, it didn't really go well. <laughs> I just really did not like the video. So I'm doing this instead. You don't get my first impressions in this video, so I'm sorry about that, but I figured this was better than the horrible video I was going to post. So this, this is much better. <laughs> so today, because I'm apparently on a review kick and all I want to do is review art supplies. I'm going to be reviewing the Tombow ABT Pro alcohol-based markers. Catchy name. <laughs> I've used Tombow's water-based markers quite a bit. I used them a lot in my sketchbook just to add splashes of colors and I didn't know that they made alcohol-based markers and me being the Copic fanatic that I am, I just had to try them. <laughs> These markers are dual tip. One side is a brush nib and the other side is a chisel nib. And I bought three different packs which each have five markers in them. Also, by the way, this video is not sponsored. They don't know I exist. <laughs> Tombow has no idea who I am or that I'm making this video. I bought it with my own money. Yes, that's out the way. Normally these five packs are $30 each, but I actually got mine when they were on sale at Michael's for half off. So I bought each of these for $15. They also sell them in 12 packs for $70 and you can buy individual markers for $6 each. So you don't really save anything by buying them in packs. So in my personal opinion, if you are going to get them, you might as well just pick individual markers and buy whichever ones that you want. So you can pick specifically what colors you need. Two other things to note is that they are not refillable, which to be fair, a lot of alcohol-based markers aren't. Copics are definitely refillable and I believe Spectrum Noir markers are refillable, but I don't think I've come across any other brand that is refillable. And then another thing, going back to Tombow's water-based markers, these actually translate pretty well from that. There are some numbers that I have in the alcohol-based markers, which I also have the numbers of in water-based markers. For example, I have 603 in the alcohol-based markers and also the water-based markers, and so I swatched them out next to each other. And the colors translate pretty well, obviously because of the difference. What do you want? I want some orange chicken. I'm gonna make some more in it. Yeah. Okay. Do you have anything to say in this video? Um... Leo helped me look for something to eat in the freezer in the fridge. Good job. Obviously, because of the different types of ink, the colors aren't exactly the same. With alcohol-based markers, you tend to get a much flatter layer, but then with water-based markers, to get that flat layer, you need to go over it multiple times, so the color just seems generally darker, but they do translate fairly well. So if you have some water-based markers and you want to get some alcohol-based markers and you like the colors that you have, you can literally just find the numbers that you have and then by the alcohol-based version. So I thought I would talk a little bit about what to look for whenever you're testing new alcohol-based markers, because I've tested them before and throughout my channel, throughout the years, I've just kind of talked here and there about things to look for in alcohol-based markers, but I thought I would just compile them here. Look, 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 we supported them with your uncle. Hello. Uh, Lily, 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 Lily. 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 <laughs> She's ruining the lighting setup. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Lily. <laughs> So then even after this video, if you want to try out various brands, you know what to look for and what makes a good marker. The first thing and possibly the biggest thing is flat colors. When you put down a layer, is there any streaking? Are there any patchiness? That's the number one thing that I always look for. Next is how do they layer after the ink is set in the paper? How do they layer on top of itself? When you put one color on top of itself, does it make it darker? Does it stay pretty much the same? And of course, blendability to an extent, blendability is dependent on what kind of nibs, but even if you only have a bullet nib, it's still possible to blend. But depending on the ink quality, blending may or may not be made easier. Another thing is feathering. That's not something I talk about as much, but if you don't know what feathering is, basically it's when you put down some of the ink instead of it just staying within the part that you colored, it kind of bleeds out and feathers out 
why it's called feathering. <laughs> Alcohol markers don't typically do that, and it's also dependent on what type of paper that you're using, but to an extent, it is a quality of the ink that you can find. Of course, there's the bleed test. Alcohol markers pretty much always bleed onto the back of a page, but when I do a bleed test, I always look for it as a bleed onto a page underneath. So if I'm drawing in a sketchbook, I fully expect it to show through when I flip the page, but did it bleed onto the page underneath that I was coloring on top of? And lastly, color variety. One of the main reasons that Copics are sought after, which by the way is what I'm going to be comparing these markers to because Copics are the industry standard and I have a lot of experience with them. The big reason that Copics are sought after is because of the large variety. I believe they have about 350 different markers. <laughs> so color variety is also an important thing to look for. How many colors are available? Are the colors too similar to each other? Is there a wide range of light colors and dark colors? Another thing, that's that's another thing to look for. So for these markers, I'll start with the color variety and it's, it's pretty good. Even within each of these limited packs, between the five colors, the color variety is pretty good. I believe in the red pack, there were two markers that were pretty similar to each other. But honestly, other than that, like there's a pretty wide range of markers even within these three packs. I looked on the Tombow website and there is 108 available ABD, AB, the but they, <laughs> there is 108 available ABT Pro markers, and there's also 108 available water-based markers. I said that the water-based markers and alcohol-based markers translate within colors, like tweet, they're, they're, they're the same, <laughs> but also it's, it was noted on the website there are 18 colors unique to the Pro markers, but of course since they both have 108 markers available, that means that some of the colors from the water-based collection aren't available in the alcohol-based collection, so I don't know which colors those are, I'm sorry, I didn't want to sit there and look, look through all 108 markers, but that's something to note. Within the colors that I got, I was pretty happy with the variety. Personally, I like to have colors that are even lighter than some of the ones I use, mostly for blending and for highlight colors. I'd like to get those really, really light colors, but for these ones, like, there wasn't anything too light. I think you- I don't know if it came in the video yet or not, but the color that I used for the skin tone, I tried to use the white of the paper as a form of highlights because that was the lightest color I had but even the difference between the white and the marker is like it was too big so I just had to color it all in with the marker which I'm not really going to fault these too much for because I think that that's a pretty common issue with a lot of alcohol based markers. I feel like Copic markers are as light as they can get. I have yet to find a brand that has colors as light as Copics so I'm not going to hold that against these at all really but just something to keep in mind. In terms of getting flat layers the short answer is yes, you can get flat layers with these colors, you can get them pretty flat. But two things, one, I feel like I had to work a little bit harder to get that. To get more flat layers with alcohol-based markers, you have to move slower. If you move your hand really fast coloring it in, that's how you get those streaks, which sometimes is what you want, but most of the time it's not. But with these markers, I feel like I had to work a little extra slower. You typically want to work smaller with alcohol-based markers, but even though I was working smaller, I still found it just a little bit difficult to get those flat layers. Again, nothing too bad, and I could definitely get it if I just was a little bit more patient, but again, just another thing to keep in mind. Another thing, I felt like I was running out of ink fairly quickly. So by far the color of these that I've used the most is the color that I used for the skin tone. I used it both in the skin tone in this drawing, I used it in the shading of the dress, and then the highlights of the hair. I have used it in other drawings, but in general I haven't used this marker a lot. But even if I tried really hard to get flat layers in this drawing, I still felt like some of the layers came out a little bit streaky, but it was only with that one. And again, since it's the one that I used the most, I just felt like it's because of the ink. I feel like it's just running out a lot quicker than I expected to. I'm not quite sure why that is, but when I compare the size to a Copic marker, it's longer and it's just a little bit thinner. Even still though, I feel like the Tombow alcohol markers hold just a little bit more ink than the Copics, but also at the same time, I feel like they're running out quicker. So I don't know if that has something to do with the actual ink itself. If it's just a specific marker I got, maybe it's a dud. <coughs> I don't know, <laughs> but yeah, that might just be a one-off thing, I don't really know. I haven't had that issue with any other markers in this in these sets, so. But yeah, they do lay flat. <laughs> that was a tangent and a half. Do these layer? Yes, they layer pretty well, actually. I was very happy with how they were layering. I think that it is definitely one of the things that they're best at. Of course, how well they layer is dependent on 
what color you're using, so darker colors tend to layer a lot less. But that's not really an issue with these markers, that's just markers in general. But yeah, really, I have no complaints about how it layered. I was very happy with how they I have no complaints about how they layered. They layered really nicely. I think that it did great. Another thing that it did great on is the feathering. There was zero feathering. Now, like I said earlier, feathering isn't entirely based on what type of ink you're using. It could also be dependent on what type of fe <laughs> not feather. <laughs> it could also be dependent on what type of paper you're using. In this video, I am using cardstock. I think that that's just a pretty great alternative to marker paper. It's a lot cheaper and I've been using it for years. And with cardstock, I don't normally have that issue. I have used markers on cardstock and they have feathered out, but these ones didn't. So I think it's really great with feathering. I've also used them on my sketchbook paper, which does tend to have things feather out a little bit more, at least like alcohol marker ink. And they still didn't feather a whole lot, of course, because of the paper type, it did feather out a little bit, but these are really great with preventing feathering. 10 out of 10 for feathering. <laughs> do they blend? They do in fact blend. That's good. <laughs> Having access to a brush nib definitely makes blending a lot easier. Also at the same time, I feel like with these markers specifically, I have to work just a little bit harder. That isn't necessarily a bad thing because in the end you still get a nicely blended thing. It just takes a little bit more patience. Then product is still very nice. Another thing I want to mention is that I used a little bit of a different blending method with these markers. So to blend markers, I think the most basic way to blend them is to layer them on top of each other. But something that I do a lot in my shading is feather blending, which is when you put the marker down and you flick it out to get that sort of feathering effect. And then you take a color, usually lighter, but it can be darker, and you put that sort of on top and you feather it the opposite way and you layer on top of where the two meet and then they blend together. And that's what I usually do for my shading. And even for this one, I still did that, but I found it a little bit more difficult to do with these markers. And so what I actually ended up doing a lot is the tip to tip method, which it's- I don't know, maybe it's just me, but. <laughs> Basically, you take the two ends of the marker and you put them together, which causes the ink to bleed into the, each other on the actual tip of the marker. And then when you put it down, you can color with a mix of the two until it fades out. I don't know if that was a good explanation, but I'm pretty sure you know what I mean. I don't normally do that pretty much ever when, when I'm using Copic markers because they just blend so nicely on their own. But for this one to get a similar effect, I had to do that. Again, nothing bad, it just a difference. It's definitely something that I had to be a little bit more conscious of because I would always try and do the feather blending but since it was a little bit more difficult I, I was sometimes not having a good time because I kept forgetting to do the other method which was a completely my fault. That, uh, it was it was on me. <laughs> and the last thing I check for is bleeding. Now how did these bleed? It actually held up pretty nicely. I feel like typically I'll use Copics and they bleed a little bit more. And these ones, they did bleed onto the page underneath, which I've talked about before and I'll say it again. It's probably because of my style. In my style, I do a lot of layering and blending. So if you have a very simplistic coloring style, it probably won't bleed onto the page underneath at all. But the only thing that really bled onto the bottom page was the darker colors, which was completely expected. But yeah, it held up pretty nicely. I think that is the one thing I will say that these do better than Copics is that I feel like they don't bleed onto the page underneath as much. Again, they do it, but they don't do it as much. So there's that. Now, all in all, would I recommend these markers? The statement I would give to describe these in terms of Copic markers and comparing them to that, I think they're a good alternative, but I wouldn't say that they're a good cheap alternative. So if these are the only alcohol-based markers you have available to you, then they are a great option. They work really nicely, I love the color variety, I love how they blend, I love how they layer. They're nice, but if you look at the price, if you take your Copic sketch marker and the Copic classic markers, those are $8 each, and then a Copic chow is $6 each. And if you remember at the beginning, a single one of these markers is also $6. In my personal opinion, if you have the opportunity to buy both a Tombow alcohol marker and a Copic Chow marker, I would just go with the Copic Chow because they are the same price and they perform better, in my opinion. So the Sketch and the Classic Copics are a little bit more expensive, but honestly, there's not a whole big difference. <laughs> they hold a little bit more ink and there are some color exclusives to those sets, but the Copic Chows, those are mostly what I have. 
most of my Copics are Copic chows. They work fantastic. So if you're at Michael's, let's say, and you want to get some alcohol-based markers and you want to get either the, these ones or the chows, just get the chows, they're the same price. <laughs> but again, like these markers were great. That's why I say that I think they're a good alternative, not a cheap alternative, unless you happen to catch these while they're on sale because $15 for five alcohol-based markers is uh, quite a steal if I do say so myself. If these are the only alcohol-based markers that you have access to, you can make good art with them. I'd like to think that that's what I did in this video. So for me personally, I am going to continue using these, but after they run out of ink, I can't see myself buying them again, just because since I am someone who has access to Copics, I don't, these aren't entirely worth it for me. But also I feel bad for saying that because that makes it sound like that these were bad markers because they're not, they're genuinely good markers. And if you have the opportunity to try them, I'd definitely recommend them. But again, good alternative, not a cheap alternative. But that's about all I have for you in terms of these. If you have any questions about them, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below. I will definitely do my best to answer them or maybe somebody else can answer them. I don't know. <laughs> and if you use these markers yourself and you've had a different experience with them, please let me know. I would love to hear it, whether it was better or worse than my experience. And also, if you want to see more review videos from me, give this video a thumbs up. I know it is very, 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 very highly requested of me to try Ohu markers. And I will say this, I've already filmed the review video. <laughs> so if you would like to see that, Give this video a thumbs up so I know you're interested. I would definitely be happy to share that with you. And if you are new here, hello, my name is Oliver. I post new videos every single Wednesday. I love sharing my art with you. So if you are new here, please subscribe. I would really, really appreciate it if you could stick around. And you can all <laughs> and you can also follow me on social media, which will be on screen now and linked in the description box below. I would definitely recommend following me on Instagram over anywhere else because I'm more active there. And also that is where I post my art. And there will be some videos on screen now and linked in the iCard you to check out if you want. Again, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll hopefully see you next week. Bye.